Hello everyone and welcome to my advanced tutorial series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2 and in this episode I want to talk about conducting Joule missions and bouncing around the moons of Joule. And to do that I've constructed a fairly simple probe and the goal is basically to just carry some goo containers and some science. So one goo container for each of four of uh, Joule's five moons. We'll try and hit four and uh, we will not be landing on them. Uh, we will just be flying by and trying to get a goo sample and then we are going to try and bring this back home so we have a heat shield. And we have the uh, uh, other instruments, the gravioli barometer and thermometer. We don't need a seismometer because it, uh, well, it requires landing. Uh, you will note we have parachutes because we are trying to land and I'm not, I'm not using communications. I haven't got that turned on, but just in case you are, I put an antenna on. Uh, so yeah, solar panels. These are our engines, the ant engines, which thankfully can now be placed radially it looks like. So yeah, my goal with this was to construct a mission using only technologies that are unlocked with less than 90 science. Well, 90 science or less. So you won't have to get the R&D building upgrade in order to unlock them. But I might have made a mistake on some part or another. I, I tried to check all of them. But maybe like one of the science instruments uh, would require more science to unlock. Anyway, we have a poodle engine here, a skipper, four thuds for extra control and also extra boost. And then uh, two boosters there. Uh, these are just the thumpers. So with parachutes. And uh, so that's the launch is pretty straightforward. We'll go over the probe in more detail once we get to it. But first, we're just going to launch. Can you make a cheaper launcher to do this? Sure. Uh, this was very quickly done. It meant to look uh, look decent. Uh, but there are plenty of engine configurations and stuff like that that could make this cheaper. Uh, you can see the Delta V. The only mod I have installed is MechJib, and that's so you can see the Delta Vs. As you can see, uh, this portion of the probe here, I used two tanks only because I was initially just going to use one tank, but it eventually got to be too much, so I slipped another tank in there. So that's why I have two of those tanks. Uh, Mass-wise, it doesn't do any harm, but cost-wise, it does. Uh, so this part of the probe, which is going to attempt to return with the heat shield and all, is 1,620 meters per second, and that's, an, I think, enough to get back from Joule. So we're going to need to save that. Then the next stage here is the terrier stage. And this terrier stage is going to have 3,858. So it'll transfer us to Joule and it'll handle all of our tra uh, transfers between the moons is the goal there. We'll see how that works out for us and if it's enough. Everything else is just to get to orbit. Okay, so on that note, let's take it to the launch pad. Okay, I'm not going to have the MechJeb displays up right now. We'll periodically check on them, but it'll, it'll be pretty clear about where we're at as far as the Delta Vs are concerned. Um, when you want to transfer to Joule is basically, I mean, a good estimate is when uh, this angle is 90 degrees. So if you draw a line from Kerbin to the Sun to Joule, this inner angle here is 90 degrees. Technically, the number is 96 degrees. So you'll note that my angle right now is just a little bit more than 90 degrees in order to uh, hit Joule. Uh, Joule is very forgiving as far as the launch timing is concerned. Um, if you're anywhere from 85 to 90, uh, 100 degrees, uh, you know, it's a pretty wide window because Joule itself is really big and it has a huge sphere of influence. So it will suck you in even if you're uh, pretty far off. Okay then, we don't have that much electric charge and we're not planning to transmit too much. That's an important point. You might want to pack some more electric charge if you want to do a lot more transmitting of data. Uh, but we're not going to be transmitting too much, just small little bits of data. So yeah. And of course we're further away from the sun at Joules, so you need more solar panels than you might be used to. Okay, ignition and launch. Ooh. I need to strut those up a little bit more. But here we go. Alright, getting ready for booster set. Set. And they're off. And they explode. Okay. 
Now I action grouped the thud engines and I don't really feel that we need them anymore so I'm gonna turn them off using action group zero. As you can see our TWR is good and the thud engines in vacuum don't have that great an ISP anyway. At this point it might be good to drop the fairings. And off they go. I clearly didn't have the clamshell fairing thing on. That's fine. Well, it looks like we packed a lot more fuel than we need for orbit. Typical. Alright, poodle. Okay, we are in approximately a hundred kilometer orbit. Don't need to be too fussy about it because we're just going to be transferring out to Jewel. So let us set our target and we want to make sure that our outbound trajectory is following this orbit so we get all of the benefit of Earth's, well not Earth's, Kerbin's current momentum around the Sun, right? Since Kerbin is going in this direction currently, the closer we go to that trajectory, the more of a boost we'll get from that current momentum. So, typically you want to add the maneuver over here for the outer planets, and if you pull it like that, prograde. I happen to know that we're gonna need about 1,900 meters per second, so I'm gonna continue going prograde. Okay, that's probably too much. Somewhere around there, and we wanted the line to go straight out like that. Okay, so that should be in line. Oh, darn the moon. Okay, well, thankfully we have enough patch conic levels so that we can still see what happens after that. And you can see we're very close to a jewel. We we have we have things going on there. Um, actually, that's a little bit. It shows the jewel periapsis, and there's some other encounter going on. So I'm a little bit confused by that. Okay, but yeah, you can see how easy it is to hit jewel like that, even with the moon or uh, oh, is that Minmus? Oh, that's so novel. I can't uh, resist. We. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so apparently we have a Minmus encounter, which is uh, an interesting thing. Let's see if we can get things closer here. And again, not using any other... Uh, technically, if I wanted to, I could use Mechjeb's Maneuver Node Editor to make this a little bit uh, easier on me. Actually, somebody asked uh, for me to demonstrate Mechjeb. Hmm... Well, let me try and get it as close as possible without MechJeb, and then we'll use MechJeb. Okay, well, this indicates to me that my timing is probably a little bit off. And so, in order to fix the timing, I'm going to move this around in our orbit. This serves as the same thing as a radial burn, incidentally. And so I'm just trying to get as close to Jewel as possible. Um, if you like, uh, anything below 500 millimeters is good, but the closer you can get, the better. Uh, well, that's 100 millimeters, or 100,000 kilometers. And a uh, good benefit is that it's going the right way. And what we want to do is make sure that we are going... Oh, that's convenient. Uh, going around the same way the moons will be, which is counterclockwise. Otherwise, we're going to have a little bit of trouble hitting them properly because we want to be flowing with them, take, getting the benefit of their own motion around the Jewel instead of working against them. And as you can see, we just have a tile encounter right there. Right now, what we're doing is we're sort of combining the mid-course adjustment with our initial burn. And so that's why it's costing 2200 Maybe on your own missions you will need to do a mid-course correction at an ascending or descending node to get this right, but we're close enough to an ascending or descending node that we can do it like this. This seems to me fairly in line with the moons of Jewel. Let me see if we can tweak it so that we can get close. Well, that was a crash course at Tylo. Um, this will definitely shoot us out. Uh,
maybe we should accept that for now and deal with it. Yeah, let, let's just accept that for now, I think. Our node is in two minutes, so we should probably just go ahead and do it. You have to make sure you have enough time to do the burn. And I'm probably rushing it here. Sorry for not putting any lights. I'm going to extend the solar panels before I forget. And I'm also going to extend our antenna. Okay, that is the end of that stage. Set and ignition. So now, now we're on the Terrier with its 60 kilonewtons and very good ISP in vacuum. Now probes do have a hibernation mode, so that is something you can make use of. We've got this hibernation off, hibernate in warp. I'm gonna set hibernate in warp to auto, so that automatically does that. As far as getting into orbit around Joule, what we would really like to do is probably hit Leith first. And so after I do this burn, I'll try and bring it in to try and hit Leith. But there are a number of ways of going about getting into orbit around Joule. Obviously, you can try and use your engine to do it. It doesn't take that much. Um, the other possibility is to use the atmosphere of Joule to slow down, aerobrake. But far better is to simply use the moons of Joule to give you a gravity assist into orbit. So again, in order to flatten your orbit to make sure that it's coming into Joule like this instead of you know, a skew, you might have to do a correction and a mid-course adjustment. We'll probably do a correction and a mid-course adjustment anyway just to bring it in closer. Note that uh, Tylo is giving us quite a gravity assist. Our initial apoapsis is only 2 joule, but then Tylo boosts us to that apoapsis. So if you want to talk about gravity assists, there you go. So again, uh, to get to joule, you'll want to pack, let's say 2,400 meters per second just in case. But the initial burn at Kerbin, just the prograde part, is about 1,900 to 2,000. The rest is all inclination correction. Now, getting an encounter like this with Tylo is not really that much a matter of luck. Uh, because the moons of Jewel go around Jewel so quickly, it's relatively easy to encounter one of them. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna be confident in trying to get one with Lathe and move us away from this Jewel one. Though Jewel, uh, not Jewel one, Tylo one. Though Tylo can do as good a job at bringing us into orbit around Joule as anything else, all you have to do is pass by the other side. You see here we're getting a gravity boost from Tylo, but if we're passing by on the opposite side, it's going to actually slow us down. Oh, I really didn't talk about the tank arrangement, uh, but once we get into light, I'll show you what I did with the tanks. It's, it's, uh, you can actually radially attach these particular FLT-100 fuel tanks as I've done here. It's no, there's no trick to it. You just rotate them and they'll uh, snap on to whatever. And I just put four and then fuel lines. Could have used 2.5 meter tanks too, but uh, that's not quite so tight within the 2.5 meter fairing. This uh, allows it to fit a little bit better in the 2.5 meter fairing, but doesn't carry quite as much fuel as the 2.5 meter parts. Well, predictably, we don't appear to be very close to what we were planning on, huh? We're over here. Well, this is a good time to uh, show Maneuver Node Editor. Okay, so Maneuver Node Editor is one of many ways uh, you can use mods to make this a little bit easier instead of trying to pull these little guys, right? And uh, Precise Node will also help if you want to try that mod. But the idea is uh, just go one meter per second at a time and see what it does. Uh, here we see that it seems to be lowering our orbit. Okay. And if we do a radial, it doesn't seem to do that much. And Oh, not radial, uh, normal. Well, 
Looks like we need a bit of a radial thing. That's timing. Remember, the timing of your burn around Kerbin, the initial burn, is effectively a radial thing, and so our timing was a little bit off. That's why we end up having to do an extra radial thing. That's the penalty. So specifically, I want to try and start off with Lathe. And part of the reason for that is that I want to try and use Lathe to get to Val, Tylo, and the rest. If we start at Tylo, it's a little bit more complicated. Oh, well, there's an accidental Val encounter. See, uh, oh! Well, that's rather interesting, isn't it? <laughs> we have a Tylo encounter and a Val encounter. See, I mean, it's... It's just not that much of a challenge when you think about it. Um, and of course, stuff like Maneuver Node Editor can really help you when, when it comes to uh, plotting these things out. Another thing you want to do is in your settings, make sure you patch conics uh, levels. I think that's the option. It's set to something like uh, 5 through 7. Uh, uh, definitely not lower than 5. Okay, we get that. But let's 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 go with my initial plan and try and hit Lathe instead. Wonder if this is gonna be the first time. Okay, so here we see a possible approach to uh, Lathe, but that's pretty wide. Now that's narrowed, and that's because um, Lathe goes around so fast that by making a minor change we've made a drastic change in the timing. Because when you talk about getting there in a year and 334 days, a uh, little bit of difference. Well, here we're passing by Tylo there. Uh, that will also cause us to have a drastic change. Uh, but uh, it's very sensitive to everything we do around Kerbin, which if it seems too sensitive to you, you might want to wait. But here we have our lathe encounter. And there you go. So this is, again, uh, passing this, okay, if we passed around Leif on this side, it'd speed us up. But we're passing on this inside track, and so it's slowing us down and capturing us into orbit. Okay, let's try and work with this. Okay, well, this is an interesting thing. This is saying that we're going to hit Leif twice, once here and then once again here. Okay, I, I think that's interesting enough for us to try that. Okay, so Maneuver Node Editor, folks. Um, you can use pre Precise Node instead if you would like to avoid all of the other functions of MechJeb, which are copious. But here we go, in 1 minute and 55 seconds, we will do a maneuver. Alright, that's... To the button. Uh, we only see a lathe encounter here with no capture. But like I said, it's so sensitive, we should probably go into dual sphere influence before doing anything else. So let's do that. Let us focus on ourselves and time warp to exit the curb in SOI. Now, if you're in career mode, uh, you might want to conduct other missions while on your way to dual because it's a long trip. Uh, in terms of Kerbin years, you're talking about many years. I mean, well, two years, let's say. Once you get to Jewel SOI, you have plenty of time to make adjustments, by the way. You can see that our encounters uh, in one year right there, but then the Leif encounter is in 40 days after that, let's say. So it's a big gap between when you actually encounter Jewel SOI and when you encounter your periapsis. Okay, we are now in Jewel SOI, so we should correct our approach to lathe. Let's make a maneuver there and focus. Oop. All right, we'll focus on Val just because that's the only thing I can select. But there we go, focusing on Jewel. Now again, you could uh, try and tweak it like this, and that's pretty good. Let's, uh, let's hit Val as a target. We're coming 
the right direction around Lathe to slow down, but we are too far away from Lathe. You can see now it's getting us into orbit. But I don't like this orbit. Look, it's got this weird inclination. It's not going to be level with the other planets, uh, moons. Uh, Val, it's got a 14 degree difference with. So we're going to try and use this inclination to flatten that out. And the reason it has that big inclination is because of uh, our approach coming in. Now this is interesting. This hits Tylo. Um, yeah, uh, so this is the fun of encountering Jules moons and all. Oh, uh, don't just watch out for crashing into Leith. There's also the matter of Leith's atmosphere that you have to be higher than. Maybe uh, for starters, we'll try this pass where we... No, Leith periaps is too low. Uh, keep above 55 kilometers around Leith. Well, here's another pass where we go past it twice. I guess I guess we'll uh, aim for the for the potential Tylo thing first. All right. So you notice because we're doing it so far away, we're actually making the adjustment from here. It only costs two point five meters per second to make all this, and that's why it was so touchy, because even a hundredth of a meter per second creates a huge bit of difference and in fact after we do this you'll see that uh, the whole thing that we've planned probably is going to be completely different. I'm doing it right now because it just costs less anyway. It's in the correct direction and in fact I'm not even going to have that plotted. I'm gonna watch what happens with my Leif periapsis. That's the Tylo encounter. Okay, um, well, well, maybe we'll try this first. Ooh. Tylo causing a crash course. I think, I think we can get Tylo to help us if we get that orbit right. Okay. This is a Tylo pass that gets us into this sort of orbit. Let's let's do this Leif encounter first. Uh, we are at a safe periapsis, 67 kilometers is nice and close, so we'll get low over Leif science if you want it. Okay, let's head in. You can see as we were approaching how quickly the moons of Jewel are spinning around. And that's why we have so much fun getting these encounters. And now we don't really have to do anything to make orbit around Joule. We just uh, hit Leith. Our entire maneuvers coming into the Joule system, was, it was only about 3 meters per second or something like that. Oh, for reference, I suppose I should show you our remaining delta V at this point. Currently we have 1,890 with the... I keep forgetting the name of this. The Terrier engine. I always call it the LV-909. But the Terrier engine, we've got almost 1,900 left, and then we've got the fuel for the journey home. Leif has a fairly small sphere of influence. I mean, considering its own gravity and size, and that's because it's so close to Jewel. It's the only moon here that has an atmosphere, which means that if you want to land on it, you can aerobrake. In fact, uh, another way to get into orbit around Jewel is to air brake at Lathe. But considering you can get into orbit around Jewel without risking an air brake and having a heat shield and all that, you just get a gravity assist like this, there's hardly any point actually using an air brake around Lathe to get into orbit around Jewel. Okay, we are in Lathe SOI. You can see it's an ocean world with a bunch of islands. That makes it a little bit harder to land on because you have to aim for one of the islands. But you don't have to use engine power to slow down. You can uh, just uh, go in, have its atmosphere do the trick, and then use parachutes. Make sure you have a heat shield though. Its atmosphere I think is 70% that of Kerbin's. Taking off again from Leif surface costs uh, somewhere around 3,000 meters per second I think. 
if I recall correctly. So, I mean, and, well, that's with some margin. It's less than Kerbin, but it's not trivial. So right now our, our path would take us into this kind of orbit. We'll pass by Tylo, and then we'll want to hit Val. There's no point using any engine power to fix that or anything right now. Okay, here we are. We should be low over lathe. Observe Mystery Goo. Um, oh right, well I'm in sandbox, so I'm not going to be able to see how much science we get. We'll just keep the experiment and move on. Now there's no absolute rule about how to do these encounters. Uh, it so happens that there is sort of a natural path between Leif, Val, and Tylo. But, yeah, first just play around with it, honestly. The main thing I want to convey here is it's relatively easy to get these encounters, uh, and it doesn't take too much patience either. So there's no reason to be like uh, skittish about sending your probes over to Jewel. It's actually very easy to get a lot of signs from it. And again, the transfer cost is only about 2,400 or so. It's, uh, getting back will cost a bit. So here we are over Tylo. There's Tylo. We're only flying fairly high above Tylo right now, which is good because if we got any closer, it'd change our orbit by a lot more. Uh, Tylo, landing on it is tough, and that's because it has very high gravity. Surface gravity is 0.8 Gs, so 80% of the gravity of Kerbin. Uh, if we focus on Leif, you can see it also has 0.8 Gs, but the benefit of Leif is it has its atmosphere to slow you down. Tylo does not have an atmosphere to slow you down. So you're going to have to use engine power to slow down around it. And orbital velocity around Tylo is close to 2,000 meters per second. So uh, actually it's a lot like our moon, um, a, a lot like Earth's moon. So if you could land on Tylo, uh, that is a lot like landing on Earth's moon. And make sure you have a high thrust weight ratio because you gotta be making that landing pretty fast. Well, high enough to uh, deal with the gravity. Oh, that's the that's the one catch. Our uh, Earth's moon only has 0.16 g's of gravity. Tylo's has 0.8, which means it's gonna be sucking you in very fast, and so you're gonna have to make that burn very quickly in order to avoid uh, losses. Okay, so we're going to do our observation high over Tylo. Yeah, otherwise if you do the, take a long time for the burn, you're going to be fighting against that gravity for a longer period of time. And that means you're going to lose a lot. Okay, so we're going to exit our Tylosphere of Influence. We have done our science here. And now we're going to aim for a battle encounter. And the key to getting all this right is the inclination. Now you see we passed by Tylo. Even though we passed high, it left our inclination bad, right? And ideally what I should have done after I passed by Lathe is sort of approached Tylo closer to its own orbit so that it wouldn't leave me with this high inclination. But I can demonstrate that now as we try and get to Val. What happens if you can't uh, figure out, okay, uh, if you can't figure out something that's really easy or just happens to work? Well, there are a few things you can do. Um, if you, uh, correcting inclination around around Joule is tough. Let's say we, well, you wouldn't want to do it on this side, but just as a demonstration, let's say we wanted to flatten our orbit out again so that's easier to encounter stuff. You can see um, getting it to 1.4 degrees is 1,164 there, so that's obviously not going to happen. But our descending node is fairly close too. It's not at our apoapsis. And so if we try to correct our inclination here, let's say to 1.3 degrees, it's still 374 meters per second. We have it, but we'd rather not do that. So the other option is trying to hit Val at this descending node, which is where we cross its orbit. You can see 
uh, right there is where we cross its orbit. Now can we do that? Well, that's gonna take some some finagling. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> uh, I just happened to click the orbit and we're relatively close. Okay. And so voila, you get a Val encounter without actually correcting your inclina inclination, without spending any Delta V. Uh, so far, we've encountered Leif and Tylo just with those initial burns that we did from far out, and that was like 3 meters per second. And now we're going to do a 23 meter per second burn in order to encounter Val. But that's in two days, so we have to wait a bit. Now, uh, why did I pick this spot to start off with uh, as far as trying to get our encounter with Val? Because it was on the opposite side of the orbit from the point that I was looking at. That's why. Uh, that gives you a lot of leverage around that point. If you do it closer to that point, uh, it'll cost you more to try and nudge it around, do radio burns or whatever you need to do. Uh, but you generally want to try and make the maneuver from the furthest point, just like when you're trying to adjust your periapsis, you do it from apoapsis. When you're trying to adjust your apoapsis, you do it from periapsis. If you know that the encounter point that you want is over here, do the burn from the opposite side of the orbit. So here we are. Oh, uh, while you're around Jewel, it's sort of important that you make sure you don't accidentally crash into Jewel. You know that our periapsis was 9,000 there. This uh, Val encounter that we're planning is going to bring it down to 3,000, which is still fine. But if we focus on Jewel, make sure to note that its atmosphere height is 200 kilometers. And so you definitely don't want to go below that unless you're deliberately intending to go into the atmosphere of Jewel, which is fine. Just make sure you know you're doing that. Oh, uh, look, we have another uh, Tylo encounter after this. <laughs> uh, if, if, if we wanted to do that. But I think we should try and get to either Bop or Paul next, because we haven't hit those. And those are sort of the more interesting ones. I uh, Maybe I'll demonstrate Paul, but go to Bop. Something like that. Okay, we've got high over Val. I'll take it. We could probably get low over Val too. But let's just pass by. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, do the moons of Jupiter work like this? And the answer is absolutely not. Um, the reason being that the, the relative size of Leif, Val, and Tylo compared to Joule is much higher than the relative size of Jupiter's moons with respect to Jupiter. Jupiter is much, much bigger than its own moons. And so, and the velocity that you're approaching Jupiter at would be much higher uh, than the velocity with which we approach Joule. And so the moons of Jupiter can't slow you down into orbit. They don't have that kind of gravity. And, um, well, in general, bouncing around them is not so easy. It's, it's, it's not impossible or anything, but getting gravity assists from them is much more tricky. And uh, yeah, initially getting, using them to get into orbit around Jupiter is not a thing as far as I know. Now, could we eventually get a uh, boost from Tylo in order to get to Paul? Yeah, probably. Um, if you don't do that, this is what you get. And let me actually make the encounter. And you can see what I'm doing is trying to hit at the descending node again to uh, avoid any sort of inclination adjustment. And uh, if we didn't do that, we're 6.6 .6 degrees off and it'll be tough to hit Paul. So I'm hitting at descending node and we get an encounter. This will cost 1,045 meters per second. So that's tough. If we did it after we passed by, let's say um, we try and take advantage of the Tylo encounter somehow. Well, you can see that with just a 243 meters per second burn, we can get an orbit that's gonna be able to touch Paul's orbit, but the inclination is bad. Well, it's not showing us any encounter, but it's highly likely that you would eventually get an encounter around there. And that would only cost 300 meters per second. But this involves quite a complicated thing that's going on here. We pass by Tylo once, high, and then we pass by Tylo again the second time. 
Thankfully, uh, neither of those passes brings us to a sub suborbital trajectory around Jewel. So this is a safe thing to do. And it costs only 300 as opposed to 1,000. Now, there's no easy way to guarantee an encounter with Paul by doing a slingshot around Tylo. I'm not entirely sure how to calculate that. There's probably a way to calculate all this stuff. I mean, the program calculates it all after all. But yeah, as far as figuring out ahead of time, uh, it might be better just to assume that you're going to have to spend the 1,000 meters per second in order to make the transfer rather than to get caught up in trying to figure it out on the fly, hoping that you're going to get this 300 meter per second one. But considering that we don't actually have an encounter there, maybe we should proceed with this uh, to see what it would take to actually get an encounter with Paul. Now, that will make it somewhat easier, actually, to deal with Bop, because Bop is the unique one. Bop is the one that lies outside of the plane of everything else. So it, it's probably the one that you want to hit last, because you're going to need to mess up your inclination in order to get to Bop. And in order to make the inclination change, it's best to have a high, high apoapsis, because the cost of making an inclination change from out there is much cheaper. Now, you might still try and hit it at the ascending or descending node, but depending on your uh, particular orbit, that might be difficult. And also, by the time you're trying to hit Bop, it uh, might take a long time to uh, do the orbit. For instance, our current orbit has a periapsis of four days here and 13 days out there, so that means that's nine days out, nine days in, 18 day orbit, right? And if you're just trying to randomly wait until Bob gets into position so that you can hit it at the ascending or descending node, you, you might be waiting for a very long time. But okay, let us do this weird thing and see what happens. I didn't really mention anything about landing on Val. Val is fairly easy. Um, Bob and Paul are very small worlds, but it takes a lot to slow down at them. Wow, is this... this is really, uh pretty extreme as far as our orbit, isn't it? But as I was saying, in general, Val uh, landing on it, if you can land on the moon, you can probably land on Val fairly easily. The only issue is actually slowing down there, and again, no atmosphere to help you. So you do have to keep enough fuel to get into orbit around Val. And that might be considered the more tricky part of all this. Going from one world to another, one of these moons to another, is the easy part. Slowing down once you get there is a the hard part. Now, here we're, we're back around Tylo. Let's see how much it takes to actually get into orbit around Tylo. Okay, and here you see a high orbit, 548.1. And a tighter orbit costs like 900 meters per second. Yeah, so that's pretty expensive. And so, uh, thankfully, Leif has an atmosphere, otherwise it'd be really tough. But, yeah, it depends on what orbit you have right now. The reason why Tylo is costing that much is because we've got this, this sort of thing going on. If we were closer to the actual orbit of Tylo, it wouldn't cost as much. So keep that in mind. When you're making your passes uh, near Val or Leif, uh, if you want to make sure that you can get into orbit to uh, around the next moon that you're visiting, then make sure that you restrain your orbit. For instance, if we had wanted to get to, uh, let's say, Val orbit, and uh, we were doing this from further out, we could have gotten help from Tylo instead of having a problem. You see, now... Uh, what? Right there. Oh. Hold on. He, uh, in fact, if we wanted to make orbit around Lathe, this would be sort of a good thing to do. Uh, now it's costing a lot because we're very close to Tylo. We should have done this way earlier. But you can see this orbit here is very similar to Lathe's orbit here. It'll only take a little bit. Oh heck, let's check. Since we've got all the patched conics and all. Now, Leif, we could use the atmosphere, but let's say we manually had to get into orbit. Now, how much is that? That's 760. But if we uh, 
if we were in a worse orbit, let's see if we can make a worse orbit out of it. Okay, that's that's a worse orbit. And this is a higher pass around lathe. Let's keep it loose. That's a thousand fifty. So um it would be better if we were physically closer to Lafe, you know, uh, taking advantage of the Oberf effect, which means that if you're closer to the gravitating body, you don't have to spend quite as much. But that that general idea. But we're not going to be doing that because we're not headed to Lathe or Val. But you can keep that in mind. Make sure that uh, when you are plotting these maneuvers to get the gravity assist from one moon or another, that you can actually do a lot to match the target orbit. But, of course, there's a limit because you still have to have one point where you're actually touching the orbit of the moon that you're getting the assist from. Okay, so now it's a matter of timing. Right now, our closest approach is when we're here and Paul is there. So we're going to have to wait a little bit and hope that we don't accidentally encounter some more moons of Jewel. Okay, now you see on the next go around. Oh, that's a good one. On the next go around, we had a bigger gap there, but this is a very close gap. Um. Well, that was just happenstance, frankly. It could have had us waiting a much longer time around here. So let's correct this. We're only a little bit off there, about 2,000 2, kilometers. And the way you correct is, well, this is obviously the wrong direction. Oop, I saw it. There it is. Paul encounter. So we will have encountered four of the moons of Jewel, and currently we still have 1,561 in this stage. So way overdoing it as far as what we... But again, I, I made sure I had the 1,000 just in case for, you know, the possibility that we wouldn't get an assist from Tylo. Okay, so here we are, and just out of curiosity, let's see what it would have taken to get into orbit around Paul. So for reference, that's an orbit. Uh, looks like 494 meters per second. So keep that in mind. You're really talking about some hefty payment in order to get into orbit around any of these things. It's not like the moon, right? The moon, uh, you just need about 200 to 300. Same with uh, Minmus. But because everything around here is quite hefty and Jules' influence is uh, so massive, you need a little bit more to match uh, the target orbit, which is what you're doing when you're making orbit. You're actually adjusting your current orbit, lifting this periapsis all the way up here. But since Joule is much ma more massive than Kerbin, you need more to do that. Okay, but we do not want to do that. We might as well do a final goo container here. Okay, keep. And let's talk about visiting Bop. So right now, our relative inclination to Bop is about 11 degrees. We cross it at those two points. Let's see if we can uh, lift our orbit so that we get an encounter. Now the problem with this situation is even though we have a high apoapsis, the descending node and ascending node are not in places where it makes it easy to correct our inclination. If we were to try and do so, uh, that's overdoing it. Here we have uh, basically a zero inclination and the cost 300 meters per second. Can we do it? Sure. But is it the best way of going about it, or can we try and hit Bop on the ascending or descending node? Well, we'll have to see. Uh, we're going to have to bring it in up. But this is costing almost 300 anyway. But this is an actual encounter. Before, we were just taking 300 to make an inclination, but we didn't have an encounter. Here, we're getting close to an encounter. There we go. 
So once again, uh, you'll note where the the maneuver node for this is. It's opposite the point that we are trying to make the encounter. And the encounter is, of course, at the ascending node since I'm not correcting inclination. And that's the better way of doing it. So it costs about 36 more than just correcting the inclination, but just correcting the inclination doesn't got, the, does not get us an encounter. So now if you wanted to get into orbit around BOP, you're eventually going to have to match inclinations with it because, again, getting into orbit means matching its orbit. So approaching like this, approaching using the ascending node or descending node and doing an off-plane transfer like this without correcting the inclination first might come to bite you when you try and make orbit around a body. So I guess the main takeaways from this video are that First of all, as far as Leif Val and Talo are concerned, you could probably hit them uh, using less than 30 meters per second if you uh, aim it, you know, uh, just make sure that uh, you hit one of them to get into orbit and then uh, fiddle around with the maneuver node and you'll probably be able to hit them in sequence. Or you might have to hit one of them more than once in order to make it work out, but uh, yeah, you don't have to pack too much if you're just flying by them. Uh, Paul and Bop are a little bit more difficult, but uh, they're really small, so they're easier to land on. Talos the toughest one to land on. Uh, Leif might be the toughest one to get off of. Yeah, I think Leif is the toughest one to get off of because the atmosphere is fighting against you on that. Okay. And of course, pay attention to those ascending and descending nodes as possible places where you can meet your target. All right, here we are in the BOP sphere of influence, and let's say we just want to get into orbit around BOP like this, even though it's really high on this side. You can see 700. And it's uh, fair to say that if we didn't have the huge inclination difference, it'd be a little bit cheaper. Uh, you could try and force yourself closer to BOP, but that costs 600 like this. Uh, you would want to have planned that ahead of time. Instead of doing it here, get closer to Bob beforehand, and that'd be better. The 900 meters per second again to low orbit around Bob. So, yes. If you're going to be trying to make orbit around these things, that is a different story, and it's not going to be so cheap going from one to the other if on every single one you're going to be trying to make orbit. But, as it is, this is pretty good. How much delta V do we have left? Still 1,221 in this stage. So, let's talk about timing the return back to Kerbin. Uh, if we're going from Joule to Kerbin, we want Kerbin uh, 48 degrees behind us. Probably 45 is a good estimate. So, right now, Kerbin is going to catch up to us. We're just going to stay in this orbit. Now, why is BOP a good... Uh, the BOP orbit a good orbit to uh, stay in it is because if you are actually in orbit around BOP or something like that uh, you're inclined with the rest of the system and you're not going to encounter a moon even if you were aimed to do a flyby like I did here uh, you're not likely to encounter another moon because you're so high up the only one that's going to interfere with you is probably Paul but at least the ones that uh, orbit very fast aren't going to mess with you. Okay, so 48 degrees behind is where we want it. We're here. That's probably more than 48 degrees right now. But we should try and plot for the transfer back. Now, to go back, we're not going from this side out. That would be boosting to a higher orbit. We're going from this side down. And the main thing right now is I'm moving where in my orbit I do the burn. And if I lose the burn, prograde or retrograde. Seems like I went too far past it, maybe. Somewhere between those two. Keep in mind, this is such a long orbit that even at tiny little movement here is a big difference. I think I'm gonna do the thing that I do which is to try and meet at the descending node because we've got a 2.6 degree difference right now. 
I'll just take any old encounter right now, I think. It's gonna be too touchy from all the way out at Jewel. So let's do this one. This one is in 13 days. And so the return from Jewel is gonna cost 922. I had originally budgeted as much as 1,872, so way, way above what we eventually needed. The reason we needed less, by the way, is because we were already in this high orbit after getting the boost from Tylo and doing all the other stuff. So because we're starting out in this high orbit, it takes less to escape Jewel. If we were starting at, you know, Leif level, there'd be a lot more on the Delta V to get out of the Jewel system and back home. Okay, well, it's probably going to take a uh, longer time than I've allowed for it, but here we go. But it's not that sensitive. Let me see if I can do something with our orbit to get us closer to Kerbin. By the way, you can use Tab to go from one celestial body to another. Okay, since I can't really see where my maneuver node is, I'm just going to use this. And we got to come out of time warp. I just want to make sure that we get into Kerbin's atmosphere. You can see the further away you are, the more sensitive it is. So it's not very difficult to make this adjustment. What is difficult is making a fine adjustment. And even though I could theoretically make that fine adjustment with Maneuver Node Editor, there's no way I can burn to an accuracy of a hundredth of a meter per second. Now, I have not brought a probe back from Joule in 1.2, so I don't know exactly what kind of heat we can expect here. You can see uh, 100, 100th of a meter per second is the difference between a periapsis of 50 kilometers, let's say, and crashing directly into it. So we're not going to be able to make anything too detailed right there. But let's do this. You can see Kerbin affecting our orbit there. As we get closer to Kerbin, it's bringing us tighter in. That's good. That's what we would like, in fact. Okay, we are going to be approaching Kerbin SOI soon. And you'll note that our total mission time is about five years. So that might be helpful for planning ahead. And also why I suggested if you're in career mode, you might be doing other missions in the meantime. Okay, so now we want to go radial away from Kerbin. This is the time when you use the radial markers and so we're going to go radial away to pull our orbit up and get an actual periapsis instead of a crash course. But I don't know how much of a periapsis we need to slow down from this very fast approach. I'm gonna go for 22 let's say. Now we're going to be dumping this part so this is going to end up being well exploding in the atmosphere presumably. So we can jettison that now. I think there's not much fuel left. So now we have the tiny little heat shield and we'll retract everything once we get close. And, but we still have these two engines to work with. So if it turns out that we need to slow down, we'll be able to do that. If, oh, and uh, also just in case we need to make adjustments because just decoupling kicked us out to a higher periapsis. Okay, so this is what we've got, and let's see what survives. I get, uh, this is the experiment for me. I sort of know how to get around Jules' moons, but in 1.2 I have no idea how Kerbin's atmosphere will react to this sort of re-entry. Now we're going to close the main dish, so it might be advisable to have some sort of smaller antenna on board as well. I don't know. Still haven't worked out all the details about the new communication system. Here we go. Wow, even at 60 kilometers 
pretty serious stuff. Four thousand six hundred meters per second. Uh oh. Ah. Um. This is not the part I was looking to save. May this will still be instructive. Um, taking a look at it, the I think okay, it looks like the battery packs maybe, uh, the probe core, oh all the things they they all exploded due to overheating. If it turns out that the solar panels and this one tank are the only things that survived, well, I will have learned something. Not survived though, there's no parachutes on here. Yep. So, oddly, the stuff on, well, I guess not oddly, the stuff on top. I guess was susceptible but as long as you keep it flat to the heat shield I guess it can survive all the soul panels survived thought those were poking out a little bit the engine nozzles survived but the stuff on top I guess the heat sort of wrapped around or something okay well, the trouble with having a bigger heat shield, well, what we're lacking is sort of a mid-sized heat shield, right? We've got the this 1.25 meter one and then the 2.5 meter one, which is huge by comparison. Oh, well. Okay, well, this one's a bust. Unless, uh, there's no other part. Nope, that's just it. And it's going to crash into the ground. So, I still have some work to do, but um, I demonstrated how to get around the moons of Jewel and how easy it is in general. And so on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.